afternoon and thank you for sticking around. So I'm Elise Duchat. I come from the University of Montpellier in southern France. Uh, and it's very late here at the moment for me. So sorry to be offline. Um, but I didn't want to rely on the um, low quality of my internet connection at the moment. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for uh, putting that nice symposium together uh, and especially for um, their perseverance in holding it again after the previous cancellations. And I'm very happy that we can finally have it. So I'm going to talk about reproductive competition and suppression among females in wild Czech Mabagoons. First, I'd like to thank my co-authors, Alice and Jules, who generated most of the data I'm going to show today. And they, my long-term collaborators, Alicia and Guy, with whom I uh, co-direct the Taubis Baboon project. So, reproductive division of labor in moles um, is probably a bit different uh, from what it is in eusocial insects and what comes closest to it is um, the societies of singular breeders where a single female breeds in a group, the alpha female, and all other members of the group uh, actually help her to raise her offspring. It usually occurs in monogamous societies which are um, spread across the mammalian phylogeny, including like carnivores such as um, these wolves and meerkats, rodents such as these mole rats, and then some new old, new old primates such as the calitrichids. In contrast to eusocial insects, reproductive skew is never rarely total in such societies and their uh, breeding attempts or breeding events by subordinates, and that reflects the fact that uh, there are no actual reproductive cases with irreversible breeder or non-breeder status. But then the singular breeders I've just talked about are um, only a tiny minority of um, mammalian species and they stand at the extreme of the reproductive skew range of values that can be encountered across mammals. Uh, I wanted to show you um, some data from a current meta-analysis um, looking at the effect size of social rank and female reproductive success across mammalian species that I'm currently working on with uh, my colleagues Shivani and Dieter Lucas. These data are pre-registered, so uh, the data set is already online, though the, the analysis are not complete. And here on this graph, you can see the histogram of effect sizes of social rank effect and one aspect of female reproductive success, which is infant production. And that groups variables such as litter mass, litter size, or number of offspring per year. Uh, we've got 133 studies and about 75 mammal species represented, represented here. And you can see that it's a really continuum. And with the singular breeders, already mentioned that are at the extreme. And actually, most of the species in this continuum are plural breeders, where uh, several females live together and breed together in a group, and with a moderate range of um, reproductive skew. And in these species, the origins and the determinants of reproductive skew are less well understood than in singular breeders. So the way Females from alpha females in single breeders maintain their reproductive monopolies by suppressing the reproduction of others. And for that, they have the usable mechanisms like neuroendocrine mechanisms, which are probably a bit less well understood than behavioral mechanisms. Behavioral mechanisms include mating interference, evictions, where they really um, evict a female from a group, repeated harassment that generates chronic stress in their victim and induces uh, a down regulation of uh, reproductive physiology and like less uh, conceptive chances. And finally, infanticide when subordinate females eventually manage to uh, give birth. And I've used here photos from plural, plural breeders to illustrate the fact that all such mechanisms are also encountered in um, societies of plural breeders. 
uh, and uh, that's exclusive to uh, singular breeders. However, the drivers uh, of reproductive suppression are very clear in singular breeders. Females basically attempt to maximize their access to allomaternal care, and it's been very well established by uh, experimental and observational studies in some co cooperative breeders, such as the meerkats, for example. But it's far less clear in plural breeders what females actually compete over. Do they compete over offspring care uh, in societies where there's allomaternal care going on, over high quality mates or mating opportunities, over current or future food resources, or over current or future social rank? I've actually spent quite a bit of time recently trying to um, understand that in the um, long term study of Chakma baboons that I'm co running. Uh, across, well, through, through three questions, which is like one, what are female baboons competing over? Second, does competition lead to reproductive suppression? And third, are there any demographic consequences of such processes? So, Jackma baboons are uh, promiscuous primates, adult primates, who live in multi male, multi female groups. It's a highly sexually dimorphic species, with males being twice as heavy as females and having large canines. Uh, and uh, there's very well, males fight over rank, and there's very high male reproductive skew with the alpha male, like monopolizing about 70% of reproduction in a group at a given time. Females are phylopatric. They are usually strong uh, social bonds between females uh, in the same group. Um, there's a linear and heritable hierarchy where daughters inherit the social rank of their mother. Uh, and females, when they become mistress, they produce this perineal swelling, so it makes it very easy to follow the reproductive state of a female. And they're usually male guarded around ovulation by a high ranking male. And uh, when a female gives birth, she usually associates very closely to one adult male. So we see here like the small baby. Um, and these associations are referred to as friendships. Uh, the male friend is usually the sire of the offspring and provides various caretaking behavior to uh, the baby, such as carrying it for short periods, but protecting it, particularly protecting it against infanticidal attempts uh, or infanticides. On specific predators, and sometimes males um, form prolonged bonds with their uh, offspring and will help them locate food sources, for example, around uh, winning. All the data I'm going to show you come from the Tsaubis Baboon Project, uh, which is in central Namibia, uh, on the edge of the Namib Desert, so it's very arid and seasonal savanna. It's crossed by the Swakop River. Uh, which uh, only floods a few days a year. It's, it's been founded in 2000 by my colleague Guy Kaolisho, and since then we've monitored like two or three troops, about 150 baboons at a time, um, and we follow the life history, demography, and collect ecological and behavioral data uh, from these baboons. They're all fully habituated and recognizable, obviously. You can see Alice uh, collecting uh, data for this project, uh, which mainly uh, consists of um, agonistic interaction among adult females. So actually, uh, for my first question, if females are, we had several working hypotheses, and we predicted that if females are competing over mates, then we mostly expect aggression to peak among estrus females with estrus females targeting other estrus females. But if females compete over paternal care, then we expect lactating females to target other lactating females. Finally, if there's reproductive suppression going on, then we expect pregnant and lactating females to target estrus females um, in order to delay their conception. This study focuses on two different periods, which are characterized by contrasting social and demographic dynamics. 
in 2000, 2000, 2005, 2006, when I did my PhD, the sex ratio was female biased. Uh, there was a stable male hierarchy and low infanticide risk, leading us to predict that females would mainly compete over mates. But in 2013, 2014, uh, the sex ratio was male biased, generating instability in the male hierarchy and high infanticide risk. This led us to predict that females would mainly compete over paternal care. And so uh, here are the data in 2005-2006. Um, we uh, investigated the rate of aggression received by females in relation to their reproductive states. Um, and we found that estrous females are most targeted by aggression from other females. Whereas in 2013-2014, it was in lactating females mostly targeted by aggression from other females. And then we, uh, in 2005-2006, we restricted the data set to estrous females to look at the um, reproductive state of their aggressor, see who was initiating aggression against them, and we did the same for lactating females in 2013-14. And we found that uh, indeed estrous females target estrous females and lactating females target lactating females. So this brought support for our two main working hypotheses that females compete over mates when sex ratio is female biased and over paternal care when infanticide risk is high. Actually, I mean, it's two manifestations of the same Okay, the same resource that females are uh, competing over, which is like um, good quality feathers, uh, protectors for their offspring. So when they're estrus, they try to access uh, matings with uh, high quality males. And then once they're lactating, they're trying to access special proximity um, around, well, uh, this, they're trying to access to come closer to these males. So in both cases, I think they're committing with a paternal care. We couldn't find any strong evidence for reproductive suppression in these tests, but then we, um, based on these results, we decided that we needed a refined test for reproductive suppression, um, which specifically focused on um, competition of a paternal care. This led us to the second question, which is, does competition lead to reproductive suppression? And we had two predictions. First, that mothers harass estrous females that actually mate with their offspring's carer. So they're not going to harass any estrous female in the group, but really those females that want to mate with their uh, male friend. And second, this harassment is going to decrease the victim's chances to conceive and lead to actual reproductive suppression. So for our first prediction, we did find that um, the female friends of a male are going to target estrous females that are made guarded by him. In comparison, they, they are not very aggressive towards those females that are not guarded, that are estrous but not guarded. And they don't mind at all about those females that are guarded by someone else than their friend, than their male friend. We further found that uh, the aggression for, from these female friends was um, linearly related to the rate of sexual activity of the estrous female with the male friend. So the more sexual activity the estrous females had with the male friend and the more aggression she received. And finally, uh, we found that um, this resulted in a decreased probability of conception of the estrous female with the male friend. So basically, this reproductive suppression was efficient at delaying the conception of a paternal offspring for the, for the, the baby of the, the aggressors. And in a more, more recent study, uh, we tried to 
investigate whether there was any demographic consequence of such pattern. And we looked at the effect of group reproductive synchrony, the, the number of conception at a given time, and the property of conception of other females. And what we found is that uh, the high-ranking females here in black, they are not very sensitive to what other females do, but the subordinate females here in um, yellow and blue uh, will have decreased chances of conception when there have been many recent conception in the group. So basically this leads to uh, birth staggering among females in the same group. And that's going to decrease the group reproductive synchrony and lead to the um, loss of the reproductive seasonality in this group. Basically, it's going to decrease the birth peak. And that explains partly the loss of reproductive seasonality in uh, our population. So in discussion, uh, is there any effect of resource limitation in female-female competition? We could never identify any effect of food availability and patterns of female-female aggression or female reproductive skew at Sobeys, despite like um, several tests and analysis. But surprisingly, like a recent study in olive baboons from Sam Patterson and John Silk, um, ran very similar analysis to uh, find out that females there mainly compete over food. And this very contrasting pattern are probably uh, driven by the fact that um, paternal care is more pronounced in Chakma baboons. So by now, these patterns might be generalized across baboon species. So there's these results, well, do these results suggest that offspring care might be a general driver of reproductive suppression in pro breeders? Like probably not because uh, allomaternal care is not that frequent in pro breeders. But for this reason, so this boons offer an interesting parallel to singular breeders because it suggests that wherever allomaternal care evolves, so in that particular care, paternal care, uh, reproductive suppression might shortly follow, hence might be a consequence of uh, allomaternal care. Um, it might not be very advantageous to suppress the reproduction of others to um, access more food because one more juvenile in the group might not change much food availability for other members of the group, but um, it's probably quite different with uh, the amount of care received by offspring where suppressing the offspring of others might really increase significantly the amount of care received by your own offspring. There are probably other drivers of infanticide by females in mammals, because uh, other drivers of reproductive suppression in mammals, because we ran a recent comparative analysis with uh, Dieter Lucas and to understand the drivers of infanticide by females, which is one mechanism of reproductive suppression. And we identified that is three different drivers. Um, females might compete over an nepotistic social rank and they might kill uh, each other's offspring for that. Uh, in solitary species, they might compete over territories and burrows. And finally, in species um, breeding in large aggregation, like pinnipeds, they might kill offspring to prevent milk theft. And so it's possible that, uh, it's likely that um, there are other drivers of reproductive suppression in mammals. In conclusion, I think this is an interesting example to, that suggests that reproductive suppression may often follow the evolution of allomaternal care in mammals, including in coral breeders. But also that for productive suppression in pure breeders, although it's often quite discreet uh, and moderate, might still have important demographic consequences, as we observed here with the loss of reproductive seasonality and the decreased reproductive synchrony in the group. And there are many outstanding questions. Uh, what are the other determinants of female reproductive suppression in pure breeders? And uh, to which extent reproductive suppression might mediate reproductive skew in pure breeders? Uh, I think so much work is still needed on these questions. Many thanks for your attention.